Hey everyone, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com. Today I'm excited to be interviewing Ryan Coisson. Uh, Ryan is a very successful online marketer. He's been doing internet marketing since 2003. He's also the founder of Ecom Masters. He's an Amazon seller and along with him and his partner, they've sold millions of dollars worth of products on Amazon through private labeling and drop shipping. So Ryan, thank you so much uh, for taking time today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I really appreciate you having me here and uh, just super excited to share kind of my story and, and what we're doing with Amazon. It's very exciting. Cool, cool. And Ryan's actually joining us from Manila in the Philippines and he actually just showed me his view. He's on the is it 67th floor? 67th floor. Yeah. Yeah, the view is pretty amazing. It definitely trumps my view. So, <laughs> pretty when cool. It's not, when it's not hazy out. <laughs> right, right. Cool, man. So do you mind, I guess the first question is, do you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and your story? Maybe just, you know, how you got started with online marketing and, um, you know, you've done a lot of different things online, you mentioned, but yeah. even how specifically you got into selling on Amazon. Yeah, so first I think, you know, all of us entrepreneurs, um, we've all kind of had that entrepreneurial grain for a long time. Me personally, I've always really wanted to make an impact and do something different. I Every time I had a job, I was constantly thinking about how to get out of the job. So I just knew that this was my kind of thing. And over the years, uh, it, you know, what's kind of funny, actually, real quick, if I just trace back, when I was about in eighth grade, I remember my brother was obsessed with the internet. He's two years older than me. And this was, let's see, so I'm, this was maybe mid 90s ish. And, um, I just couldn't believe that the internet was, at, late 90s actually, was actually going to stay around. Right. And I, I actually was like, why are you bothering learning about all of this different stuff? This is not going to stay around, which I, I kind of think is hysterical now because if you think about it, like this is how I make my, my living and how the world really operates through the internet. Um, but, you know, I started doing all different types of things online and I really got into drop shipping maybe about five years ago and... I liked the model uh, because one of the things that was great about it is you didn't have to do the product creation, you didn't have to do the shipping, the returns, you didn't have to deal with a lot of the issues that come with running a business, especially one that's more you know, or in line with kind of a brick and mortar business. As an affiliate marketer, you know, someone who has promoted other people's products for the longest time since 2003, that to me was like the next transition where I didn't have to deal with these types of dealing with clients or doing all this different stuff. But the, the issue that I found was we were running, a, a friend and I were running a site that had to do with uh, college stuff, licensed merchandise. And the biggest hurdle was we had thousands of products and we had 30 suppliers. So dealing with stock and stuff that was in stock, out of stock, refunding customers. I mean, it was impossible to keep track of everything. And it really, in the end, to me, was, was somewhat of a flawed model. I think drop shipping can still work. But I started to look for other options. I started to look at what could I do that was more scalable and streamlined. And that's really when I got reintroduced to Amazon because I had actually previously, before this, I had started selling on Amazon when I was an eBay power seller. I started selling on Amazon as well to be able to kind of take advantage of other another marketplace and other customers. But again, it wasn't a scalable model, you know. And to me, after I've looked at, you know, I've been online for you know over ten years now, and I'm at a stage where I want to find the opportunity that I can grow with instead of you know a lot of people do one thing, switch to something else, do one thing, switch for, you know, do that for a while and switch. To me, I want to find something that is more evergreen and perpetual. And that's what I believe selling physical products in your own brand are. That's awesome. And so for those that aren't familiar, um, there's drop shipping, there's private labeling. Do you mind sharing a little bit about the differences and what you yeah, believe sure. to be the best, the best way of making money on Amazon today? Yeah, so the drop shipping is a very simple model. Basically, you're, you're finding companies out there that already sell products. And in our case, um, it was very advantageous to do in the collegiate and professional athlete space, um, sports teams, because the licenses were very, very expensive. If you want to license, say, the, where I went to college at uh, Florida State, so if you want to license the Seminoles logo and stuff like that, you got to pay a lot of money. 
So these companies have already paid all of those licensing fees. They're already manufacturing the products. They've already got the warehouses shipping. Everything all dialed in. So basically, I'm putting their products on my website, and I'm selling them for, say, $50, and they're charging me 20 I basically, as, as I get a customer, I send the customer's information to the drop shipper, and then they simply ship out the order. And they obviously, they can put my return mailing address, they handle all of that stuff for me, they act on my behalf. And it's a really great model because, again, they're doing the legwork. You just need to make the sale. Now, there's some challenges, obviously, there because you don't control the inventory. You don't control when they work, if they take longer holidays, you know, especially around Christmas. You don't control, you know, a lot of different things, unfortunately. Um, and we ran into some hurdles there. But in general, I would say drop shipping can still be a good model. The other major challenge that we ran into is it's kind of sometimes a race to the bottom in that, some of these companies will say that you have to sell, you know, your suggested retail price is X, but you cannot sell it for less than, say, $40. They're suggesting you sell it for $50, but you can't sell it for less than $40. Well, sometimes when people can't market as well as maybe someone like um, yourself who's learning, you know, or someone who's learning from you, um, or someone who's gone through our courses, you know, they start to lower the prices. And because you have no competitive advantage, it's the exact same product there's kind of a race to the bottom on price. So it can be a little bit tricky in that situation. Versus private labeling, the easiest way to understand it is if you think about your favorite grocery store that you go to or a Walmart, as an example. You go into Walmart or you go into your grocery store and uh, in the United States, you know, when I'm back there, there's Publix or there's, you know, all these big chains. And you go there and you're, you're walking through the aisles looking at all the different stuff and then you notice, okay, there's Publix brand can of peas. There's Publix tater tots. There's Publix whatever. They're simply private labeling those products from a company that already manufactures all of these. And they're simply putting their own brand, you know, Publix brand. And Walmart has, uh, I think it's called Great Value. And all of these companies have their own specific brand. And simply you're just working with a manufacturer, much like working with a dropshipper, but now you're working with the manufacturer and they're already producing these products, whether it's in the United States, in Canada, in uh, you know, all different places, China, you know, all throughout Asia, all over the place, different places specialize in different things. We've even looked at products in Sri Lanka, of all places. And then you work with the manufacturer, and they simply create the exact same product that they're creating, maybe with a slight variation if you would like, or a large variation if you would like, and then they put your branding your labeling, your packaging on that product. And now it becomes your own brand. And as it being your own brand, it's 100% unique to you. You can control the price. You can control the marketing. You don't have this kind of race to the bottom on pricing. And if you're like my business partner, Daniel, and I, we always focus then on premium. Everything is premium price. We kind of aim at the top level. We want to attract the higher end customers because that leads in more margin for us. And at the end of the day, with more margin, that allows us to spend more money. And as you'll learn over time in marketing, if you can spend more money to acquire a customer than your competition, you're always going to win because you can outprice them. You can outcompete them. You know, they can't, they can't spend enough money. Yeah, okay, got it. So definitely, I mean, I think long-term building the brand through private labeling is the better way to go because... I mean, you're building raving fan customers, and with that brand, it gives you so much the ability to launch multiple products to those customers and do a lot more. Um, yeah, there's kind of a hybrid approach, too, some people take. You know, um, you can build your brand and focus on that, and just like on the back end, if you only have two products, and I was saying, say I was selling kind of sports gear, and I was selling, you know, we used to sell car mats, and say we had car mats, and on the back end, if someone's buying, car mats from me that has a you know sports logo on it, there's no reason on the back end I couldn't drop ship other products to them and sell those to them via email. That just expands your product line. And to me, that's more having like a long term vision of what you could do. And you know, we can talk about strategies around that if we have time on the call as well. Yeah, absolutely. And do you mind maybe sharing a little bit just you know, you got in just kind of going back to your story, you know, you got into drop shipping, private labeling and everything. What what's kind of what's been the results uh, for you? You know, how has this taken off and for you? You know, for my business partner and I, I mean it's been incredible. Um, you know, we've built the largest business that 
we've ever built online. You know, we've done um, incredibly well. We have hundreds of products. We now are partnered up with three of our students, and um, one of those brands has a hundred plus SKUs. Another brand's got uh, about thirty or so SKUs, and another brand's got roughly fifteen or so SKUs. And um, you know, we're just scaling and scaling and scaling. And you know, right now it's amazing the opportunity. A lot of people are kind of starting to run away a little bit from Amazon because they're afraid of competition or they're afraid of whatever. Uh, but we see the opportunity hasn't changed at all. The opportunity is actually much greater now and we're doubling down on what works for us. We're expanding international. Um, you know, we're just really, really focused on this. And you know, part of the reason that I'm here in Manila, well, the main reason that I'm here in Manila is my business partner and I, we also have an office here. And we've got about 40 staff at the, at the moment that are here helping us with our actual business. And it's been incredible to not only be able to grow a successful business and do incredibly well and sell you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of product, but to also then be able to employ as many people as we do and uh, make an impact on their lives and their family lives as well. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And I definitely, I want to comment on what you said. And I want to ask you maybe a little bit more about the opportunity because I know sure. for myself, just selling on Amazon, starting with publishing first, I remember when I first launched my course, you know, everyone was saying, you know, the opportunity is gone, it's too competitive, and sure enough, year after year, there's more people making more money on Amazon than ever before. You know, yeah. it's like the markets do change, there's competition, but as long as you're willing to put in work, and you got to also keep in mind how much Amazon is growing. So I'd love to hear a little bit more, you know, someone that's watching this right now, they're considering this as an opportunity. You know, what do you see the opportunity on Amazon right now getting into it? Where do you see Amazon going? So first, I think, you know, people, whenever you look at a business that you want to do, you have to kind of first look at the business model. You know, there's so many business models that you can do online and be successful. I mean, the old saying is there's a million ways to make a million dollars, and it really is true, especially online. So you have to look at the business model first, and to me, what is the Amazon business model? Like, what makes it so great? So the business model, obviously, is you're selling physical products. You can sell digital products as well. The private label model is you're selling physical goods that are usually less than a hundred dollars, and you know you have good margins on those. Um, and basically, you're selling them on their marketplace. That's kind of the, the initial business model. To me, the advantages of it is you're leveraging Amazon's credibility, you're leveraging Amazon's growth, you're leveraging all of their customers. You know, their the trust that they've got with those customers just outside of that initial credibility of being on Amazon. You've got, um, you know, obviously, they'll do marketing for you. I mean, all of the, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but the main option, you know, is to use FBA. You know, you can sell them through your own warehouse, but FBA really, again, kind of makes it more similar to drop shipping in that you're shipping all of your product to Amazon. They're the ones handling the shipping. They're the ones handling returns. They're doing the bulk of the customer service for you. You still get some questions. I mean, you know, it's not overwhelming. I mean, one of our accounts that sells a ton of product gets maybe 20 or 30 questions a day or emails a day, and we're doing large volume. Um, you know, you get all of these extra added in benefits for you. And obviously, one of the biggest ones is Amazon's distribution. They've got all these distribution fulfillment centers across the country. So that means that if I sell a product in New York and I sell a product in North Carolina, they might not even ship from the same place so that the customer gets them faster. And that makes the customer happy. You know, obviously, Amazon really wants to care about that customer. So you look at that whole general thing. And then you kind of consider that business model. Has that business model really changed? And the answer is no. You know, I mean, the, the business model hasn't changed at all. What, what's different is now that there's competition coming in, people are starting to look at it as like it's harder to actually make money. And yes and no. So to me, the general business hasn't changed. The opportunity hasn't changed. Maybe the Maybe slight, slight ease of the opportunity has changed, but that's not that's why not I'm why on I'm Amazon. Amazon. And that's probably that's not why you, why you sell you know, digital you goods. Digital goods. Um, uh, the, opportunity the opportunity is the same. Is the same. Yeah. And do you hear a little you echo? Hear sorry. Little, sorry. Oh, no, no, I don't. Okay, okay, cool. Um, just on my side. <laughs> um, so the opportunity you know, really hasn't changed at all. 
the actual opportunity is simply enhancing. You know, as you mentioned, Amazon is continuing to grow. If you look at 2013, they did about 68 billion. In 2015, they're doing, they're estimating they're going to, you know, break 100 billion. So now that obviously isn't all from just physical product sales, but roughly 40% of their revenue is derived from people like like myself who sell private label goods through their platform. You know, so I think the opportunity is greater than ever. You have to kind of retrace back why you're looking at the opportunity. And yes, it can be more competitive. Yes, it's not as simple as slamming a bunch of reviews and doing discounted sales. But if you build a long-term brand, if you build a long-term business, you wouldn't want to do those things anyways. And, it, it, so. and I think people look at it as just you know the, the path of least resistance and they mm -hmm. want to, you know, the... the the opportunity of just doing making money with no work, I mean, that doesn't really exist. And I think a lot of people, they're not willing to put in the work. And as long as you are and you're willing to build the brand and do the work, like you said, and get the right education and knowledge, then this opportunity can make someone millions and millions of dollars. And it's been proven time and time again. So I, I and I don't know if you can relate to this as well, but I find making money online is so much easier than ever before. You know, you mentioned all the reasons of what Amazon does and how we're leveraging you know, their trust, their reputation, their website, their conversion rates, their marketing, fulfillment, shipping, all that sort of stuff. And I remember personally when I got into online marketing, how much more challenging it was. Like, it took me <laughs> years before I started making any money online. You know, I was just trying to bang my head against the wall. I kept trying to for now. I see now I see people that all of a sudden, you know, they're you know, sort of selling on Amazon. And I'm blown away by how fast people are getting results. You know, so that's the amazing thing that I found. Um, with this opportunity as well is how fast someone can put up a product and get it selling and Amazon really does so much of it for you. Yeah, I mean it's a great point. Like when I got started, I remember, you know, even if I don't even think when I initially started WordPress was around. Yeah. You know, I was still doing like custom coding yeah. HTML yeah. and even when I started selling on eBay it was like I had this crazy software that I was like loading things into this software and then like uploading it and I mean it was things were not easy uh, it was a, so much harder to actually do a lot of the technical stuff and I think part of the problem with our industry and I'll just kind of internet marketing industry in general and people are trying to make money online is that too many people have bred the idea of make money on the beach, make money while you sleep, make, you know, quick cash, blah, 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 blah. And that's kind of one of two of the problems, in my opinion. That, that first problem gets these new people who are coming in, the expectation that, oh, I, can, I should be able to do this right away. And they'll buy a course, they'll buy a training, and they go through it, you know, and, and we, we ask our customers why they would refund, et cetera, stuff like that. And... They're like, oh, it's more work than I thought it was going to be. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're building a business that yeah. could potentially change your life forever. It's going to be a little bit of work. You know, that's, that's the good thing. You know, it's going to keep a lot of people out because it takes work. The other problem is people like you and I who've, you know, been in the industry for a while make money. We know a lot of other people that make money. And as entrepreneurs, one of our traits uh, common in entrepreneurs is kind of we, we fall prey to this shiny object syndrome. You know, we see so many people like, oh man, my buddy is making 10, 10K a day selling one product and buying media. Or, oh, my friend's running this membership site and he's got 100,000 customers paying him membership fees. This guy's got software, you know, like, oh, I should do this, I should do this, I should do this. We get pulled in a million di different directions. But once you've figured out your business model and you figure out why you want to do that business model, and you just stay focused on it, if you put that commitment, if you put that drive all towards that one thing, you're going to be able to really knock out all of your competition, for the most part, just by that one thing, because so many other people are distracted. And focus is incredibly powerful, as I'm sure you know. No, I totally agree. And I mean, even, I mean, just, yeah, realizing that this is a business, and with any business, there's going to be failure and challenges and all the things that come with it. And I've you know, the challenge with many people I've seen is they've never run a business before. They've, they've never faced little adversity and some of the challenges, logistical things that you have to deal with with, with business. And I, I spend a lot of time just helping people to understand that that's normal. You know, it's normal. Yeah. You know, 
it's not like success is just this frictionless road of uh, you know everything is smooth and everything like that. It's it's not the case. Um, and uh, you know just to learn from all those things as much as possible. And I find it's more so your psychology and mindset along with the right training and tools, co combining yeah. that together is what can allow people to have a lot of success. So, And to that point, you know, a lot of people say, like, I want to make a million dollars or I want to make, you know, I hear all the time, oh, I would just, only if I can make $10,000 a month, you know? And one of my first questions is, have you ever made $10,000 a month in your life? Yeah. No, okay, you're making 40 grand a year right now. Let's, let's figure this out. Do you think, the same person as who you are right now can really handle and can really be the person that can make ten thousand dollars a month. The that gap from four to ten thousand, maybe there's some slight tweaks that need to happen. But the gap from like say ten thousand to fifty thousand or fifty thousand to a hundred thousand, et cetera, is pretty big. And you have to become the person that you actually need to be to run and operate a business. And as you grow, you need to, we're continually investing in ourselves by hiring coaches, by going through tons of training and really, you know, spending time in quiet, which is something that most people never do anymore. But you have to become the person that is actually needed to accomplish those goals instead of just like thinking about this, oh, I can make money real quick type yeah. thing. No, that's awesome. I totally agree. Um, cool. I maybe want to pick your brain a little bit on the mindset stuff a little bit later, but just going to go back to the process of Amazon. You know, a lot of people, they have their different criteria of what they look for in terms of a product to sell. Is there certain things that you look for that are you know, the most important things when deciding what product to sell on Amazon? I think, yeah, there are definitely things that we look for. Nowadays, it's a little bit more... Um, a little more open for us because we have a base and we have kind of some of our core products and we can expand our product line from there. But in general, when you're getting started, it's important to find products that are light, you know, from a, sh from a shipping standpoint so that it's not so heavy when it's being shipped to the customer. But another thing about it being light is a lot of people don't take into consideration how much it might actually cost to ship from your supplier. You know, whether it's in China or in the United States, it still can be very expensive. And, you know, we have a supplier in the United States where each product is roughly a pound and we ship them on pallets, you know, to Amazon. And, I mean, it gets expensive even though it's going from the U.S. to U.S. Um, and if you have something in China and you're going by sea or you're going by air, the size and the weight is very important for the pricing. Um, so that's one thing. We also look for items that are easily, you know, to, easy to ship, hard to kind of break, and not so much like a, a glass item or something like that because we do want to avoid that. But, you know, I've had, I can't tell you, I had a friend uh, who had nightmares <laughs> selling coconut oil because he wanted to sell it in a glass bottle. And, um, you know, he did that because he doesn't want the plastic to leach and all these different things. And... Well, what was happening is people were getting their products, and as you know, when people buy stuff on Amazon, if you're anything like me, you know, you buy not just usually one thing, you're buying like a bunch of different stuff, and they usually ship it in as small package, as many packages, or excuse me, as little packages as possible. Well, he was ha having issues with really pissed off customers because the coconut oil was breaking in shipping and destroying everything else in their box. So we avoid things that are glass, but also... Initially starting out, I would encourage people to steer clear of other things that might be technical in nature, like electronics, that a component might break or something might have issues because at the end of the day, your reputation on Amazon is super important. The number of reviews that you have, but also the star ratings and the comments that people are leaving with their reviews is really, really critical. So if you have something that's super technical in nature, while it may get broken in transit, you can have issues, but also from a supplier standpoint, that could be hard um, as well if you're just getting started to understand exactly what to look for in someone who can provide a quality product consistently. So those are two big things. We also look at how the product's existingly selling, um, not just on Amazon, but online in general, because for us, Amazon is only a launching platform. You know, Amazon has a lot of great potential, um, there's other marketplaces that they have that have incredible potential as well. And, you know, we like to launch there for ease, but then once we've proven products, 
we move them off of Amazon as well. So we can sell them through other channels. So nowadays, we really look at that general um, whole market setup. So we do what's called a very simple process called the market research report. And we simply look at the market, what's happening. You know, just like any big company would actually go out and do, they would do some market research. Whether you spend 30 minutes or an hour doing it, if you just take the time to go and see what other people are doing, selling that product right now, you're going to give yourself, I mean, a major advantage over most people just look at Amazon and they just look at their best sellers ranking. You know, some people just look at the top 100, you know, and I mean, to me, those are all flawed, flawed concepts. You know, if I'm going to spend time, if you think about it, we're talking about building a long-term business. Why would I rush into choosing a product or even choosing a market if I spent a day or a week, you know, trying to figure out the right market and the right products to sell in the grand scheme of things, it's a drop in the bucket and I'm giving myself, I'm, I'm giving my the ability to push the boulder down the hill instead of constantly pushing the boulder up the hill and, and fighting against myself. So those are some things we look at. Um, we also look at price point because again, we want to be premium. So we look at what price can we sell this at and what's the market supporting currently um, is there an opportunity to kind of complement it with something that can help, um, you know, justify a premium price? You know, what, what other things can we do to enhance the actual product or anything like that? Um, but in general, again, I mean, people are looking at products that are maybe $50 or less. We look at more expensive products in general now just simply because we have that base. And um, you'll find if you're selling more expensive products, again, the competition is less because people that are in the private label game are usually starting with lower tiered product because they don't want to spend a lot of money on inventory. And you know, that's fine. We started with, you know, Daniel, my business partner, Daniel Audenson, he started with about 300 and some odd dollars on his first order of inventory. I started my first order of inventory for like 700 bucks. But now, now that we have this whole process and system and a successful business, we can order a thousand units at a time right out the gate. We can order products that might cost twenty dollars to you know the manufacturer cost instead of products that are two dollars. You know, and again, you're weeding out competition. That's awesome. No, you give me a lot to comment on. But one thing I want to emphasize is again just the importance of picking the right product and really taking your time with that because, from my experience as well, that can really make or break your success. You know, and really determine yeah. how easy or how difficult and challenging it will be for you. Now, I've had a case of a product recently I launched. Well, my first product, I went for a very niche market and I, I think mm -hmm. I made some mistakes with that and uh, it's done well, it sells a few units a day, but my second product, I was blown away with how little effort I've had to put into it relative to the first one and how much better yeah. it's selling. And yeah. despite, you know, and I, you know, you learn obviously from launching products and as time goes on and everything as well, but um, just really picking the right one, and I've I've worked with a lot of people now as well, where they email me their product opportunities, and I've helped save people a lot of mistakes <laughs> or time and money. And I mean, you are going to invest your money and time and energy into launching this product, and you want it to have the most success possible. So, yeah, taking your time with that is very important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, again, I mean, you're it's the first step. Mm -hmm. So if you do the first step poorly you know, all the rest of the steps are going to be really challenging, you know, and we kind of teach a five pillar strategy of like how to build an FBA business. And the fifth pillar and often the most missing link for people is how do I get traffic? You know, how do I get visitors? And as I said earlier, if you can buy customers um, from more than any of your competitors, you can just totally destroy them. Um, so the key is if when I'm looking at a, an opportunity now, if I can see opportunity to where I can buy traffic, that's an, that's you know even if the margin's a little bit smaller or the product's more expensive or the lead time is longer with the supplier, that's a major opportunity because I can then immediately get it up, turn on Amazon ads, maybe turn on a few other traffic sources, and immediately getting the visitors and the exposure that I need to get sales, and that's critical. I mean, we just moved one set of products to another Amazon marketplace and within the first, um, basically the first month now, just from using one traffic source, we're now at a 12,000 pound run rate 
within a month. You know, I mean, if you think about that, like, that's life-changing income for somebody, yeah. you know, all with just one thing, very simplistic, but the product lended itself to traffic. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I want to definitely ask you a lot about the traffic and marketing, but mm -hmm. one question I have for you, something you brought up a little bit, is how Amazon is the launching platform. And I think this yeah. is really important because I think a lot of people look at Amazon as the end-all, be-all, mm -hmm. but people don't realize that, you know, Amazon is great, take advantage of that, but you don't necessarily want to depend on them too much. Right. And once you build your brand, maybe building your own store, Shopify, do you want to maybe share a little bit the other platforms or other opportunities beyond Amazon? Sure, sure. So I think the first thing, again, you have to kind of understand the reasoning, you know, why Amazon is just the launching platform. So while Amazon is amazing to sell products, you're, you're leveraging all the things that we talked about. Again, you lose out on some of the control, just like with drop shipping. You're losing out on the control where if Amazon all of a sudden decides they don't like a certain category anymore of product and they decide to remove that, you know, then you're SOL. And that has happened where they have decided, oh, you can't sell this product anymore. And that actually happened to us, you know, on one thing. And um, Amazon then also only gives you certain information about your customers. And as you know, in, in the online marketing world and, and business world, being able to email your customers is a huge advantage. And it, that is very challenging within Amazon. You know, it's hard to send your customers direct marketing messages for your other products, which is where a lot of the money is, is you know, lost. Um, so those are a few reasons. There's many, 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 many. But again, when you're, when you're looking at the whole business of selling physical products, Amazon is just one channel. You can then sell through... Shopify or another Magento or you know WooCommerce or any of these other traditional e-commerce platforms and I think it's really important that once you've proven a product or a brand to be successful that you do do that just for the fact that people are gonna go out there and look up your brand anyways once you start moving any type of volume you know I've had people tell me like oh I've been selling hundred thousand dollars a month on Amazon and I finally decided to set up my website and it looks like crap, you know, in my opinion, but they're like, I don't know why, but I'm all of a sudden making six grand a month from just from my website. And the reason is because people are going to see if you're legitimate. They're going to see what kind of presence you have. And now they're finding a website and a place to buy from. Right. So they're buying there. So it's going to usually increase your revenue kind of right off the bat. But more importantly, it gives you more opportunity because with your own website, you have the ability to track far better because that's a downfall with Amazon. Tracking is very challenging. You have the ability to really place you know, other opportunities like retargeting pixels, which open up new opportunity for you from a marketing standpoint. Um, it allows you to collect all of your customer data and be able to send them messages much more easily. You can obviously build in. Um, you can use the Amazon same fulfillment if you like, or you can have different fulfillment. But it just gives you more opportunity. But to me, the biggest opportunity is now it gives you additional assets. So when I look at a business model, I also look at what business assets I can build within that model. Because if you can start to develop assets within that business long term, as things start to fluctuate, adapt, all these assets are going to give you a competitive advantage. And that's one of the biggest things I think about uh, having your own you know, professional looking storefront is going to do for you. And um, then obviously you can move from, from your own storefront to international marketplaces. There's other channels out there too. People can sell on other sites, you know. Um, Jet is coming out, which is supposed to be like an Amazon killer, you know. And there's Alibaba has all these other sites that you can sell on and uh, there's sites internationally. I mean, there's people that even sell on sites like Sears, you know, and there's other opportunities with those types of sites as well. Um, but those are all similar to Amazon. You, you'd go after them for a particular reason. But as you build this kind of long-term business, and again, we always talk about branding and building a long-term brand. Well, if my brand eventually grows to being sold on Amazon.com, Amazon Japan, Amazon Mexico, Canada, UK, my own store, uh, I'm, being, I'm sold on Sears, I'm sold on, um, you know, O, I'm, I'm sold on all of these different sites. Do you think my credibility is going to enhance? You know, think my competitive advantage is going to enhance? Anytime I release a new product, it's just like there's this perpetual effect throughout it. 
I mean, of course, you know, but again, that's a long-term play, and it takes time and effort to do all those different things, but if you just focus on one and simply start to strategically roll them out as time allows and as your business allows, that's important. That's because, awesome. last thing I'll just say about this is because uh, Amazon is the launching platform for, for us because it's so easy to get started. Um, one of the other biggest mistakes we see people run into is they try to expand too quickly. And um, we think with Amazon, you know, it helps kind of control that expansion a little bit. As long as you're kind of move with your growth and not try and like blow up too quickly. Most people, especially who are unfamiliar with this opportunity or unfamiliar with business in general, don't understand the concept of you can grow too fast and implode on yourself. Um, especially if you're, you're, you're a startup and you're, you're funding everything yourself, you, you, know, you have to be very careful because it's not, I, you know, I talk to my business partner about this all the time and you look at our business and the costs and everything like that and one thing I'm always reminding him is like, remember that everything that we're doing, we're funding ourselves. We don't have millions of dollars in startup capital or anything like that. So if we do something and it costs $10,000, it comes out of our bank account, right. you know, versus like you're just, it's money that some investor gave you, you know. Um, so I always try and keep that in mind as well. That's great. And so at what point, because um, people ask me this all the time, at what point do you think it would be intelligent and strategic to, I guess, build the website and your own personal store and then even perhaps even going internationally in terms of the UK or Japan or Germany, Canada, et cetera? So I think initially th what people need to focus on is they need to find one product that is a great consistent seller. So if you're selling like five units a day, I would focus on growing that product, you know, until you get to maybe 20, 30 plus units a day at a minimum. And then that one's starting to kind of tick along. And what you'll find is as you start to get to higher and higher numbers, it, there's like a, it's a kind of that exponential growth curve. You know, all of a sudden Amazon starts to drive more marketing for you. You start ranking for a lot more keywords. And if you're, as your conversions stay the same or grow, you start to get more and more sales. So first you have to kind of figure out where that growth is going to be because you need to manage it. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is if you go from selling 20 a day to 150 a day overnight, you're most likely going to be in some inventory issues. And we like to get to a point where you're ordering inventory maybe three times a year at most, you know, ideally like once or twice a year so that you don't have to deal with all the logistics of it and the time delays. So if you're growing too fast, you're going to have to start, especially if you're shipping from overseas, you're going to have to start kind of staggering inventory to fund it unless you have a lot of money because what, what I found with generally for people is as they're growing and growing and growing, they can't get inventory enough. And running out of inventory is one of the, the biggest um, problems for your Amazon kind of momentum. You don't want to ever run out of inventory. So you might have to order a thousand units, ship it by air. And then if you're all of a sudden bumped to 150 a day, that's going to last you like a week. And then so then you've got to order, you know, some that are coming by sea, like 5,000 units. And then you got to order another one by air. And then, you know, you're, you're trying to, to stagger to stay in stock. And the last thing you want to do is be worried about your inventory in UK and having to ship some of that inventory there. So once you've kind of got that baseline and you're kind of getting consistent sales and you got your inventory under control, then I would look at starting to expand. And the next expansion could be additional products. So if there's another product, when we do our market research report and initial market testing, we always look at sourcing two to three products right off the bat. We might start with just one, but we want to have another one and then another one already in case this first one's kind of a dud or maybe it's like one of your products that you mentioned only selling a couple units a day and doesn't do as well as we expected. Then we can, boom, pull the trigger on the next one. It's already there. Um, so I would encourage people to do that. And then obviously when you have two products, it's easier to sell. You know, I had a, another guy that I was doing some, just some, some free kind of help with and he was telling me, you know, he was selling one product for the longest time, and then he finally decided to add another product, and that product was doing insanely well. And he added another product, and immediately, just like adding another, adding a, a Shopify store, his sales went up because people were looking at what else he was selling. And because the, comp the products were somewhat complementary, some people would buy both, or some people would go, oh, I want to buy this product instead of that product. 
and he added you know another five figures a month to his bottom line boom right off the bat very little effort and um, you know that's important to recognize as well and then it, as you start to expand internationally it, we encourage you to go slow you know if you move into the UK it's you know it's basically a kind of a breeze to then go to Germany and these other places uh, go slow you know again it, it has to do with inventory we've, we've seen people run into issues where Next thing you know, they're needing to get lines of credit from their suppliers. They're needing to get all these different things. And remember, this is a business, and that was money that you have to pay back. If all of a sudden your sales drop, then you might not be getting the, the revenue that you expected to be getting to pay these people back. And now you know, you're a little bit of a trouble in these situations. So go slow. You know, time is on your side here. Don't try and grow too big. Uh, this business, again, selling physical products is going to be around years and years and years to come. So focus on sustainable long-term growth. That's great. Let me ask you a little bit about launching a product. You mentioned uh, you focus on selling at a premium price. When you first launch mm -hmm. the product, are you selling at a cheaper price? Or is there a certain process that you might go through in terms of you know, right out of the gate in terms of getting reviews, trying to rank it, yeah. um, and then maybe at a certain point raise the price, or what, what, what's just your philosophy and strategy around that? So it's a little bit different per product, but in general, we always like to keep the price high uh, when we're starting because it doesn't really make sense to sell a product for $20, and then after I've had 100 sales, sell it for five, you know, five times as much money or whatever it is. Um, so... We will do discounts and promotions and stuff like that to our existing buyers or to uh, particular pro prospects that are interested in our products. Um, and we have kind of a process for that. But normally, it's not anything crazy like you've seen a lot of people do where it's 99 cents or $2 or $3 or whatever. Nowadays, we don't really sell anything less than you know $5. Uh, and that's very, very rare. Normally, discounts will say, you know, as being a previous customer, we're going to offer you 25% off, you know, our, our retail price. Um, and we do those types of things. And I think, you know, long and gone are the days where you're kind of doing these, like, big multiple hundred push sales of a product to try and, like, shoot it up. We, again, look for more sustainable long-term growth. Uh, we also leverage our existing assets. You know, whenever we're launching products, we like to leverage our existing assets to get reviews from our existing customers, our beta test users, all of those things it's important for us to kind of get an initial foundation of the you know, reviews and the sales. I mean, Daniel and I, we always talk about the two things you really need to focus on are reviews and sales, so we built in systems and processes to generate those. Um, however, once you get a base, and I'm talking maybe 10, 15 reviews, and you start getting a couple sales, you really need to then get more aggressive with your actual marketing. You know, turn on Amazon ads, turn on any other marketing channel that you want to use. And we teach people, again, to focus on one or two marketing channels. Get really good at that. If you get really good at Amazon ads and you got really good at, say, YouTube, I mean, that's all you need to build a very successful business. You can then scale the other stuff later on. But don't get wrapped up in, I mean... Far too often, even with our partners that we partner with, one of the, the, last, the last partner we partnered with, I was reviewing all of the things that they did, and they had done recently like 12 different strategies. All of them are pretty great strategies. Yeah. The problem is, okay, what was the result here? Oh, well, we only tried that for like a day or two, and it didn't really deliver the results we wanted, so we let it go, and we moved on to this. And there was a theme, you know? The theme is if you do a lot of different things poorly, you're not going to get very good results. But if you do one or two really well, you're going to be able to kind of control those results. So that's, that's our motto, you know. I mean, we try and do less, less is more. And it's the same for reviews. I mean, if you're just starting out, you've got no assets, no resources, instead of going out to buy reviews or do all of these different things that you see people do, why not look at your market research report, find one of the leaders in your space, and reach out to them and say, hey, I'm about to release XYZ product. I, you know that you run this website. You've got a bunch of people. Let's say yoga. You run this yoga blog. You've got a ton of people on your site, tons of traffic, you know, big email list. I'd like to do some type of joint venture with you with this release. You, know, you can be an affiliate for the product and maybe I compensate you XYZ. But let's do like a, 
you know, an email series or let's do a video series. Let's do, you know, a special discount for your subscribers only for X period of time. You can leverage other people's assets. And to me, it's just a, a shift. It's almost like a paradigm shift going away from what's easy and what everyone else is doing, being a contrarian and looking, what would a normal business do? You're tapping into someone else's you know, market authority and you're leveraging their credibility, their relationship with their audience and immediately that's going to make it so much easier for you to sell and so much easier for you to get that initial base and then once you have that base you can kind of start doing what I call reverse pyramid. You start from the kind of, you build the list of say 10 influencers in that space and you start with number 10 and then once you get him on board, then you go to number nine, then you get to go to number eight, and then you're mentioning every single one. And by the time you get to the number one influencer, you're like, look, man, I've been working with this person, this person, this person, this person. And then all the person's competitors, and they go, wow, this guy knows my market. <laughs> they know this. So all of a sudden, it's so much easier to get to that person yeah. instead of going, most people go the vice versa. Um, so that's, I guess, a little bit of a long-winded way to say no, hey, what we do. Yeah. I think the important thing that you're mentioning too is this is why you don't have to worry about competition is because like mm -hmm. most Amazon sellers, they're just focused on Amazon and what you're talking about is you're talking about marketing your product with these other channels, these other platforms and when you do yeah. that, because if you're just getting your sales from the Amazon search, then you're competing with every other listing there for that keyword, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're using YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and blogs and all this sort of stuff. Now you're driving sales from outside of Amazon, which is going to give you a competitive advantage over everyone else that's trying to rank on Amazon. And, yeah. you know, you're going to get that boost, right? Yeah, so, I mean, just think about it from Amazon's perspective. Like, they have two listings. One is getting all of their traffic from within Amazon, even if they're spending money on Amazon ads and they make 100 sales a day. You are on page two, and you're getting 100 sales a day, but... 80% of your sales are coming from off of Amazon and they're coming from these sources that Amazon clearly recognizes. They're obviously tracking where the traffic comes from. They see, oh, this is coming from an email, this is coming from YouTube, this is coming from Facebook. They're going to put weight on that and they're going to rise you up. They know that, okay, this product converts outside of just our marketplace at this conversion rate. And you know, we believe that that will give you a major, major advantage over your competition. That's great. So is there a certain platform or marketing channel that you find more beneficial for Amazon sellers out of, you know, whether it's social media or YouTube or is there any particular one that, or I guess every product's different, but is there any one that yeah. stands out for you? Every product is different, but I think, you know, Amazon ads is something that's really important yeah. for people to understand because it's on the platform. People are already there, so it's, it's easier for people to buy. Outside of that, you know, I've grown up, you know, online using pay-per-click. So whether you use Bing, AdWords, or um, you know, even Facebook, um, those are all kind of pay-per-click to me. They're, they're great proven traffic sources. But again, I always kind of revert back to what is currently working in that marketplace. And with so much of the competitive research tools out there like Espionage, uh, AdBeat, SpyFu, all these sites, you can go in and start to reverse engineer what all these competitors are doing, especially ones that are selling on their own store. And by looking at their data, you can start to build what a strategic rollout should look like for that brand. And we kind of complement that for the particular niche. So we don't just say, oh, we're always going to do Amazon ads, Bing PPC, and this. We try and tailor it to that particular market because you know, some markets, you might not be able to run AdWords. You know, some markets, you know, if I'm selling sex toys, you know, <laughs> AdWords isn't going to love me and it's going to be a lot harder to advertise that everywhere, you know. So you have to just kind of figure out what's going to work within that market and then and go go through it. Is, is there a certain way with, when you do PPC outside of Amazon that you're able to track? With, you know, because yeah. that's the challenging thing is they don't allow you to do a, a conversion tracking pixel yeah. on Amazon's website, right? So the, the biggest challenge there is, I mean, this is what a lot of people do and what you can do. You know, if you're if you're just selling on Amazon, this is kind of one of the best things that you can do. I've seen people do other things, but um, you can send people to a pre-sale page first where you're you're putting a retargeting pixel, you're pre-selling, like you're truly pre-selling the product there. And then they can add it to the cart from that page and you would use 
a separate company or a separate entity that you have, uh, you know, affiliate link, or there's options using things like Vig links, and um, that gives you an option to use kind of an affiliate link from another separate company, um, and then you're tracking it there. The problem is when you track there, you, Amazon's cookie only lasts 24 hours, so there's definitely kind of some leakage there. Uh, in general, it, it's going to be helpful, and your conversions should be higher. You're going to get less people directly to the listing, but they should be higher because you have a pre-sell page. And then you can obviously remarket to these people as well. If you have your own store, obviously it's so much easier because you can place that pixel and you can track. I do know people that say, oh, well, I know that I can't track it, but I'm going to spend the money anyways, and I'm just you know, banking on the fact that it's working because my sales have increased, and then Amazon's a logarithm kind of takes in effect and really drives the sales up because of the natural, you know, additional sales and things like that. So you have to kind of be careful with it. I I think that you should, you know, more aim towards the pre-sell type page. But um, once you start getting into these other traffic sources, and you're going to spend any significant amount of money, you know, I know somebody that is spending tens of thousands of dollars, like upwards of 40K a month direct linking to Amazon. I would never do that at that stage. I'd be running all the traffic through my own store because you're missing out tons of opportunity and you're you're wasting money at the end of the day. Awesome, very true. And yeah, I mean, even just I like the idea of the pre-sell. I mean, whether even that's content, if you're retargeting, mm -hmm. you have a coupon, you know, drive them into a list. There's a lot yeah. of different strategies. Let me ask you um, a few more questions before we wrap up. Um, sure. You know, one of the most common things that everyone always asks me about, um, and I'm sure you get it a lot as well, is Amazon reviews. Is mm -hmm. there any you know one or two tips or strategies in terms of what people can do to get reviews for their product? So yeah, I think I mean again, like there's so many different things. So first, I always tell people make sure you read and understand Amazon's terms of service. You know, it's really important, especially now that Amazon is making changes, not a ton, but they are making changes to fully understand the terms of service for you. You know, a lot of people just go, oh well, this person said this, this person said that. I personally believe it's really important to read it yourself. Um, there are sites out there like Snagshout that you know is designed to you, you can give people discounted product and they are going to give you a very honest review of what your product is. There's Amazon's Vine program, which is Amazon's top reviewers. You can give them a product. This is for free, and then they'll actually give you a review, positive or negative. So the key first with when it comes to reviews is have a really high quality product. You know, if you have a really high quality product, reviews are going to be easy. Then you just need to start facilitating people actually leaving a review. So you can build in to your purchase sequence once someone buys that you know you you have them leave leave a review, leave their feedback, etc. like that. That's going to help somewhat. But kind of that initial boost, we don't really get super aggressive and go out there and say, "Oh, I'm going to um, use Snagshot and get a hundred reviews or do these things, we kind of tap into our existing, you know, database, our existing, you know, think, leverage the assets that we have, and that's through whether it be beta testers or you can do this with bloggers as well. Tap into bloggers that are within your marketplace. I mean, if you think about it, just just look at the uh, travel niche. You know, people love to travel. You know, and they want to travel all around the world. And you've got all these people that write travel blogs. Well, if I sold a travel backpack, you know, or something like that, and I wanted to get reviews on my product, instead of just going to like a hundred random people and saying, "Oh, here, take my product and leave me a review," do you think it would make sense to reach out to a hundred of these travel bloggers that are traveling all over the world? Some have a big following, some have almost no following, but I guarantee you, all of them would love your your backpack, especially at a discount or for free. And then they could actually write a blog post. They could maybe make a video. They could do social media posts about it and leave a review on Amazon as well. So you're kind of killing like five birds with yeah. one stone there. So I think, again, but that is, again, you're sacrificing that quick fix for more of a longer-term play. Does it take work to reach out to 20 or 50 or 100 different travel bloggers? Yes, of course it does. Um, does it take work to like set up a you know one big blast to one of these paid sites? You know, not really. You know, very very quick. Uh, but long term, which is better for you? You know, so that's kind of how I look at it.
Yeah, and I, I find a lot of these bloggers that are out there, you know, they're just doing it as a hobby, as a passion mm -hmm. um, on YouTube or whatever. They have no idea how to make money online and how to actually monetize it, right? So if yeah. you can go to them and actually show them, hey, here's an opportunity for you, yes. number one, you can receive a free product, but number two, you know, I like the idea that you had is somehow partnering with them as an affiliate in some way. You know, if mm -hmm. it can benefit them somehow or even just giving away a certain number of your products to their audience, there's yeah. a lot of different things that you could do with that. So it's a really good strategy. Yeah, and I remember too, um, this was probably 2007 or so, maybe 2008. I was running a rock climbing website and I remember I got reached out to by uh, somebody that worked for FRS. And uh, it was a company that Lance Armstrong was sponsored by and like all this stuff. And I was like, oh man, like, what does this company want? And they wanted to send me like all this free product to try it and give me their feedback and like write about it on my blog. And I was like, whoa, this is the first time that it had ever happened, you know? Yeah. And I, I felt special, you yeah. know? You felt like if people think that it's very common that this happens to these bloggers, I mean, that is not very common. And that site, I was getting <coughs> tons of traffic. I was making a full time living from that site. And that was the first time that it happened. I got everything and I tried all the products hated almost all of them, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, still, like, it was, it was amazing to me, so, I mean, these people, I don't want to, like, discredit the, how powerful this strategy is, because it, it really can be insanely powerful. That's awesome. Awesome, man. Well, this has been really useful. Um, I think a lot of people are going to benefit a lot from this, and I could probably talk on for hours and hours with you, but, um, <laughs> you know, you've created an amazing course called Ecom Masters. You've created it with your partner, Daniel. Do you want to tell people a little bit about that and then also how they can maybe learn more about it? Yeah, sure. So Ecom Masters, what, what's awesome about it is it actually brings together uh, four of us. that My business partner, Tanner, Lo, uh, Tanner Larson, Lo Silva, and then my business partner, Daniel Audenson. So what, what happened is I met Tanner and Lo at an event and it kind of just goes to show the power of being at events. You can meet and really connect with people belly to belly and learn so much more than it just being online, but um, we were very aligned with what they were doing, and, and Daniel and I decided to come together with them and create what we believe is kind of the flagship course that teaches selling physical products on Amazon, and uh, the course basically walks people through our core curriculum, which is all about building your business, growing your business, and then scaling your business, and then we have, obviously, we did um, like eight different live workshops that, you know, are recorded and inside there. And we did tons of Q&A and we had a live event and we brought in lots of experts in their fields and uh, lots of unique twists and how crowdfunding can actually tie into your Amazon business and how, you know, a friend of ours raised over $500,000 for their crowdfunding campaign to fund all of their inventory needs in a month, you know. Um, so some really, really amazing stuff. But the idea is that the course keeps people on the cutting edge of exactly what we're doing with Amazon and what's working now. We have a case study in there as well where we show actually one of our own brands um, and how that brand is doing and all the pros and the cons and everything that happens with that product. Um, and you know, if people are interested in more information, they can just go to it's ryananddaniel.com forward slash Stefan. So ryananddaniel.com forward slash Stefan, and I'm sure you'll have a, a link somewhere for people to visit as well. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely appreciate that. And um, what I'll do, I'll put a link below this video, but it's ryanandaniel.com slash Stefan uh, to learn more about that. And I guess my last question is, you know, people that I guess are just, you know, kind of going back, you know, someone that has a job right now and they're, you know, looking to start an online business and get started with this. Is there any last final piece of advice or something that you might want to share with someone that's in that position or someone that's brand new at this and they're at the early stages uh, yeah. Is there anything maybe, you, you know, looking back at yourself when you started that you wish you knew or something that you can share with someone else? Is there something so I like think, that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think when I got started, I wish somebody would have really told me, like, how important it was to focus on the business model and, like, why you actually want to do that business model. Because I see too often too many people start any type of online business and they're doing it because I want to make ten grand a month. I want to do this. That's why I'm doing this. I don't care how I do it. I just want that. And to me, that's kind of like a, you know, a, a fleeting strategy in that if I'm doing it, like, I mean, I've made 10 grand a month in lots of different things, but I can tell you when I read an SEO agency, I absolutely hated it. 
I hated dealing with that type of situation, and I just it was miserable. So I just completely shut it down. So you have to figure out something that is like why you're going to do it, and with that becomes that long-term vision. Have an actual long-term vision. You know, I mean, think about where you're currently at in your life and what you're trying to accomplish. Far too often, I see these people that start something, and their expectation is, I want to make X by X. But you're totally new. You don't know how this business works. You don't know anything. You're completely green. Why are you making it so, you know, so much pressure and so challenging for you? And not to say that you can't come out the gate and within a month, within two months, three months, be making you know, a full-time income because obviously you know it, it happens. But if you have like a long-term 12-month plan and you know, what you want to accomplish in 12 months and stay focused on that, it's, it's critical to your success. I mean, it's just like anything that you do. I recently have been doing a new fitness challenge with my business partner, um, with Bill Phillips. And, you know, it's a 12-week challenge. And um, it's, a, it's pretty amazing that, you know, things were going great, 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 great. And then, like, week six, all of a sudden, I started having some different hurdles. And, and I was like, oh, man, this kind of sucks. And then I came back to, like, why am I doing this? You know, again, for me, it's not just the 12 weeks because, yes, you can achieve great results in 12 weeks. It's I want sustainable results five years from now. I want sustainable results 10 years from now. So I'm building in routines, systems, and processes for my nutrition and uh, physical conditioning that are going to serve me five or 10 years from now. To me, you should apply the same thing to your business ideas. You should build in something that has a long-term vision. Even, you know, I see people working at a job for 10, 15, 20 years, and they start making 10 grand a month on Amazon, and they want to quit their job. Is that a good idea? If you have maybe a higher risk tolerance, possibly, but for me, how much savings do you have? How much inventory do you have? What is your expansion plan for your business? Because I've known people who make 100 grand a month, and they're only making four grand profit because they're putting everything back into their business to expand. So, like, what would you do if all of a sudden you're making 50 grand a month, but really you're, you're making less than you were at your job? You know, you've got kids, you've got family, you've got bills, all these things. Plan. Just think about these things. Take the time to actually sit down, write it out, plan what you want to do, and create an architecture to get you towards those goals. Don't just kind of, oh, I want to make 10 grand a month. You know, see what that really looks like and, and you know, um, I learned this from Mark Ford, you know, he talks about um, how the new kind of like entrepreneur, you know, used to be you have to be a lot more risk, take risk and all these things. Now, the great thing about selling on Amazon, as an example, is they do most of the work for you. So you can do it and while part time, you know, you don't, I mean, a lot of times I see people go full time and they're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with my time all the time? You know, they're like trying to like work 10 hours a day and I'm like, it's okay. You know, you don't have to work 10 hours a day. You know, that's the great thing is that Amazon does a lot of these things for you. You can start focusing on some of the other stuff. But again, just kind of get an idea of what that all looks like and, and understand why you're really doing it. You know, and if you take the time to do that, again, I, I think you're going to give yourself an amazing competitive advantage and you're going you're gonna to see yourself progress at a much faster rate because obviously if you, you know, they say, how's the saying go? Something along the lines of, if you don't plan, you plan to fail, you know, and I think it's super true. Um, and it, that comes from planning your business and also planning, like, inward, your, you know, your life and, and how you want this to all happen. That's great. Yeah, I totally agree. Focus on the long term and, and, and really focus on the process, too, as you said, because I think a lot of people, they have that short-term goal. And sure enough, you know, same thing like in fitness, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds in 30 days and maybe you only yeah. lose 10 pounds. And then people get discouraged and they give up, not realizing that the process, yeah. if you get that down, the results will come. Yeah. So, and they also are too harsh on themselves. Oh, you yeah. know, the fitness yeah. is a perfect example. I see people, like even in this challenge I'm currently in, they're like, ah, oh, I'm six weeks in and I've, I've only lost, you know, 15 pounds and yeah. I'm not going to make my goal. And, you know, it's how you frame everything. Yeah. It's like, congratulations, you're six weeks in, you've completely changed how you eat, you're exercising six days a week. And you've lost 15 pounds. How amazing is that? Congratulations. By the time you get to the 12 weeks, maybe you'll lose 20, 25, 30 pounds. That's going to be way better than where you were 12 weeks before. You know, I mean, same with your business. You know, people get discouraged all the time. Or, oh, I'm only making 80K a month or I'm only making five grand a month or only getting five sales a day. 
whatever it is. Yeah. Congratulations, you know, you, before you started this, you had nothing, you know? Well, any amount of passive income, you're immediately doing it better than 99% of the population, <laughs> right? So it's like, exactly. when you put it in perspective, you realize, you know, I remember the first time I made like $100 a month online, I was so ecstatic, you know, because yeah. for me, that was just like, wow, I can pay for my cell phone bill every month. And I yeah. thought, hey, how can I get it so I can pay for my, you know, my, my car expenses every month and then my rent yeah. and it's kind of slowly having my business kind of cover different expenses or at least that's how I thought about it. But yeah, just starting off small and slowly scaling it up. It's the perfect way to think about it because it kind of com it makes it real to you. Like, oh, this business is paying for my cell phone. This yep. business is paying for my rent. This business is paying my mortgage, whatever it is. And all of a sudden you have, say your mortgage is two grand a month or five grand a month. All of a sudden you have that extra money and the smart thing would be to do is to yep. save it or invest right. it or put it into your business instead of just, oh, awesome, it's time to go to Thailand, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but, you know, build a structure around that. You know, I think it's really important to, to do yeah. that well. That's awesome. Wow, man. Well, thank you so much. This is, uh, well. I, I learned a lot. I think it will benefit a lot of people. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, if you guys want to learn more about Ryan, then go to ryananddaniel.com slash Stefan. You can learn a little bit more about his course and the programs that he has available. But thanks again, man. Really appreciate no it. No problem. And, uh, of course. Talk again soon. See ya. Bye now.